<sighs> man, I was on such a roll. I really was. I made my pre-playoff predictions video where I filled out my bracket challenge on the NHL website, and I'll admit, I got some matchups wrong, mostly on the Eastern Conference, but I was feeling like a million bucks because after the first round, my Western Conference was perfect. In terms of the winners and the losers, I didn't get the games played right, but I predicted in my bracket video, Seattle over Colorado, I predicted Vegas over Winnipeg, I predicted Dallas over Minnesota, and I predicted Edmonton over LA. I then had myself a Western Conference Finals matchup of Seattle versus Edmonton because I thought the Kraken would beat the Stars and I thought the Oilers would beat the Golden Knights. But no, those both went wrong. On the East, I had only the Toronto series correct, all the other ones, I had them all incorrect. I had Boston over Florida, New York over New Jersey, and then the Islanders over the Hurricanes. But now, you take a look at what we have as our Western Conference matchups, or our regular conference matchups, excuse me. And I think it's now high time to go out there and make yet another video just talking about both the series we have at hand and my thoughts about them. Let's talk today about Dallas Vegas 2.0 and Florida Carolina. Starting out with the Dallas Vegas series. Now, yesterday we had seen the Dallas Stars beat the Seattle Kraken in Game 7. Honestly, I feel like the better team ended up winning. And that's not necessarily because I felt like the Kraken sucked or whatever, I just felt like the Dallas Stars played more of a consistent and constant game throughout the series. The reason I say this is because, based off of what I had seen in all these games, it really felt more so like the Kraken were speedy and they were keeping up with the Stars, but they won their games because they had short spurts of time where they just went absolutely ballistic and they scored like five goals in three minutes or whatever. Like. The Kraken, I felt, were carried by those short spurts. Meanwhile, the Dallas Stars, I felt, played a much more constant game in the down periods when the goals weren't being scored and it was just chances being traded back and forth, especially in that Game 7. The Stars really had a lot more control of the puck. You could definitely see a lot of the nerves in these Kraken players showing themselves in Game 7. And, of course, it ends off in a 2-1 win, where Rupe Hintz gets on the board. He's been having an incredible playoff so far. And you've had the rookie, Wyatt Johnson, going out there, scoring the game-winning goal with a few minutes to go in the third period, which ended up being the game-winner after Oliver Bjorkstrand scored with 17 seconds left in the game. But either way, Dallas advances over to the Western Conference Finals for the first time since 2020. Interesting enough, because last time in 2020, they played the Vegas Golden Knights. How did the Golden Knights get here? Well, Aiden Hill. That's it. Okay, not just it. There were some other players that played well, too. We made the entire video yesterday about Jack Eichel and how good he had been, but... Goaltending definitely was on Vegas' side in that Edmonton series. You could definitely say that Stuart Skinner kind of crapped the bed there. And you also had yourselves just a whole bunch of players on this roster stepping up to take down that two-headed beast that is McDavid and Dreisaitl. I think a lot of people would have said three-headed beast, McDavid, Dreisaitl, Bouchard, maybe even four-headed beast because Ryan Nugent Hopkins had 100 points in the regular season, but nah, the Oilers couldn't get past. Unfortunate. And then you have yourselves the Eastern Conference matchups where the Florida Panthers just completely obliterated the Toronto Maple Leafs. Sure, the Leafs had some chances, the Leafs had some zone time, the Leafs had some games where they might have had or deserved a better fate, but they couldn't get it done either. Florida just kind of waltzed their way into the Eastern Conference Finals, and on the other side, you have a Carolina Hurricanes team that pretty much did the same thing against New Jersey. You really saw the experience in New Jersey come forth as lacking in comparison to this Hurricanes team that has just been so prevalent in the postseason these past few years. They're always winning at least a round. They forced their way into the third round this time. When it comes to these matchups, though, I guess I'll just say it right here so we can get it out of the way. I'm having Dallas in six, and I'm having Carolina in seven. Now, for Dallas, I feel like this series against Seattle really showed off just their maturity as an organization, just the dominance that Miro Heiskanen plays, how good Ottinger was able to bounce back after some shaky performances against the Seattle Kraken, and just the overall level of control that they had. For Vegas, I don't necessarily know if they've really been challenged much in this postseason so far. 
against Winnipeg, I mean, the Jets kind of lost their mojo. They had a really good run to end off the regular season, which is how they squeaked into the wild card in the first place, but... Vegas just kind of waltzed right through Winnipeg. And you could say the same thing about Edmonton. Vegas just sort of capitalized on an Edmonton squad that didn't look nearly as strong as we all projected they would be able to be. And so now, going up against probably their best opponent in this playoff run, I think Dallas has what it takes to go out there and just take control and play the game they want to play more. If you take a look at the season series between Dallas and Vegas this season, hey, guess what? Dallas went 3-0-0. And that sounds great until you realize that, sure, the first game was 4-0 for Dallas, but then the next two, both shootout wins. 3-2 on February 25th and 2-1 on April the 8th. So the Vegas Golden Knights were 0-1-2 against Dallas this season. However, of course, you know, there are no shootouts in the playoffs. It's just sudden death. We'll see where things go. I really do feel, though, that based off of how both of these teams have played up to this point, that Dallas just has what it takes to go out there and take care of business against the Golden Knights. They already done so in 2020. It was the bubble playoffs. I think if you were still subscribed to this channel back in that time frame, you would have remembered all the streams that we had done because we did do broadcasts for every single one of those games. Then you go over onto the Eastern Conference and you talk about Florida and Carolina. Both of these teams have been so good this entire postseason run, and I definitely do feel that for the Florida Panthers, you could say they have the right to ride on that hot hand. They have what it takes. They beat Toronto, they beat Boston, and they looked really good in the process. It's just similar to Vegas. I feel like Carolina is a different beast this season. Sure, Boston technically was the big bad Goliath that everybody had winning the Stanley Cup in their playoff brackets, but I feel like Carolina and the way they've played, just the level of competence, the speed, the control, how they're able to just dominate shifts, this is a team that I feel is overdue for making it this far. And the Florida Panthers being where they are right now, sure, it's going to be a battle. It's going to be a fight. That's why I have it going to seven. But if I had to go with my gut pick, just who I think is going to take it all, if you had to decide in a seven game series, I'm going Carolina, seven games. It's going to be really tight. It's going to be a great goaltending matchup too. Bobrovsky is on fire right now, but so is Freddie Anderson. I'll admit though, I definitely do think that when it comes to just the talent level, I feel like Bobrovsky has shown off more in this postseason run so far, Anderson has had a little bit of an easier task, if you're asking me, because I feel like the Hurricanes just kind of put their goaltenders in better spots. And of course, you still have Ranta in there, who has been pretty okay himself, but Freddie has really been the guy to carry so far. If you take a look at the season series, the Carolina Hurricanes had themselves a pretty good run as well against the Florida Panthers. They were 2-1-0. and oh. Sure, the Panthers shut out the Hurricanes in their first matchup on November 9th, but after that, it was just kind of Carolina taking over. 4 nothing win on December 30th and a 6-4 win on April 13th. So ultimately, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying Dallas in six. I'm saying Carolina in seven. And then, of course, if you go to the Stanley Cup finals, green versus red, Dallas versus Carolina, two southern markets going out there and battling it out. I mean, we could make another video about that realistically, right? But it's going to depend on how both of these teams play in their conference final series, respectively. If you're asking me today, though, just to make some pre-informed decisions on whether or not I feel this team is good enough to win, I'm probably going to say Carolina in seven over Dallas. If you had to twist my arm and force me to make an opinion right now, that's kind of just how I feel. I feel like the Dallas Stars have been very good, but the Carolina Hurricanes have shown off more and a lot more swagger, too, in the way they've been able to carry themselves throughout this playoff run. But either way, we'll get there when we get there. We'll make another predictions video once everything is said and done. But for now, let me know in the comments all your opinions about the conference finals matchups. What do you think about Dallas versus Vegas 2.0? What do you think about Florida versus Carolina? If you're a fan of any of these teams and you're pissed off at what I said, please let me know in the comments why my assessments are incorrect and or why you think I should be smartening up in what it is that I say on this YouTube channel. Thoughts in the comments section below. I hope you enjoyed this. And bye.